Check your clock because remarkably we're just two methods away from finishing this game. Predictably, the two methods are critically important. One to move the player around the screen and one to handle collisions between the player and the space debris. Handling player movement is as simple as implementing a new method called Touches Moved, which is called when a user moves their finger around the screen rather than Touches Began, which is called when they touch down the screen the first time. We will, like always, need to use the location in method to figure out where on the screen the user touched. But this time, we're going to clamp the player's Y position, which in plain English means we're going to stop them going above or below a certain point, keeping them firmly in the game area. I'll be clamping the player's position so they can't overlap the score label, and I'll apply the same restriction on top so the player has a symmetrical channel to fly through. This is rather easy to do, so let's look at touches moved now. We'll say, touch is moved. Oops, Daisy, touch is moved. Then we'll say, guard let touch is touches dot first, else return. Var location is touch dot location in self. And if a location dot y is less than 100, if it's near the bottom of the screen where the score is, we'll clamp it by saying location dot y is 100. Don't let them go beyond that point. Else if location dot y is greater than 668, that's the opposite, remember the screen 768 high, we'll say location dot y is 668. And end the condition. And finally, most importantly, player dot position is equal to that location. So move the player to wherever they move their finger to. Our last task is to end the game when the player hits a piece of space debris. And we'll do that by using our old friend, the method did begin. Now this is going to create a path limiter, position it where the player is, or at least was, and add the explosion to the scene while removing the player. In this game, we're also going to set is game over to be true, so the update method stops adding to their score. Here's all the code we need. Let explosion equals SK emitter node using the file name initializer of explosion. I'll force and wrap that, it's in our bundle. Then explosion dot position is the player position. Add child the explosion, player remove from parent, get it out of the game, and do is game over is true. I press command R now to give it a try, and we should be able to click around the screen and move around to make the player move. Here I'm here, I move around, I can dodge these hammers, go to the bottom here, I'm gonna die here maybe, yep, boom, hit that ball and died. Score 185. You see it all seems to work very nicely. Now before we're finished, I wanna mention just briefly this force and wrapping of SK emitter node here on line 95, and again up here on uh, line 29. Now, I can understand why some folks would say, why are you force and wrapping that? There's no need for that. It might crash if Starfield SKS wasn't present, but that file is built into our bundle. It's right here along with Explosion SKS. It's either there or it's not there. There's no place when it might not be there at runtime, because if it isn't there, for some reason, our game's hideously corrupt and shouldn't be run. Um, so in this case, I'm personally happy to use a force and wrap, but I can understand why it might, might want to say, I'll do if let or guard let instead. It's totally personal preference. Do what feels best to you. Anyway, that's our game done. Good job.